First, Milan fans watch Ibrahimovic retire. The next day, they see Paolo Maldini get fired. Sandro Tonali has been sold to Newcastle. The month of June has been a nightmare for Rossoneri fans, and it just got worse. Milan's main striker target, Marcus Thuram, who the club have been negotiating for weeks, is also a childhood AC Milan fan, is headed to Inter Milan. Now, here's the thing, guys, and it has to be said this way. This right here, losing Marcus Thuram to Inter Milan, is the first official slap in the face to Cardinale and his new management. Here's why. Look, Ibrahimovic's retirement was Ibrahimovic's choice. Firing Paolo Maldini, a controversial decision, but a decision that the club didn't have to face a lot of consequences for. They didn't have to answer to the fans. They didn't really care to answer themselves to the media. They just got away with it scot-free. Clearly, the Kurva also didn't step in. So they didn't have to face an outcome that disturbed them. They were in full control. The sale of Sandro Tonali, another thing. It's an asset that was acquired during Paolo Maldini's days. The current management had nothing really to do with bringing Tonali to Milan. And at the end of the day, yes, they sold that asset, but they also sold him for the highest price ever paid for an Italian player by a Premier League club. So yes, they sold Tonali, but the outcome, the consequence of that decision was 80 million more in the bank. But this, the negotiation for Marcus Thurm was a 100% being taken care of by Cardinale. He said he wants to be more involved with the club. This was the profile that they picked out. Whoever was negotiating, Ferlani, Moncada, they were the ones exclusively in charge of getting this deal done and they botched it, which is the first official slap in the face to Cardinale and the new management because this has a consequence and the consequence is the asset that you're trying to acquire for weeks and weeks on negotiating for. He didn't wanna sign with you. He wanted to sign with your arch rivals. And the worst part is this is a childhood AC Milan fan. And before we jump into why this decision was possibly made by Marcus Thorum, I'm gonna say this. If Paolo Maldini was our sporting director, yeah, I'm with you guys. Thurm would be a Milan player. So let's try to split this video up into why Marcus Thurm should have picked Milan and why he probably didn't. Obviously, we're not sitting in Marcus Thurm's head, but these are all reasonable assumptions to make in the situation. So why should he have picked Milan? Well, the first reason, we just have to go all the way back to his youth. His father, Lilian Thurm, played for Juventus. He also played for Barcelona. But as a child, Marcus Thurm was a fan of AC Milan and Real Madrid. So this is a boyhood club, a club that he loved and had the opportunity to play for. And if you look at how early Milan got into negotiation with this player. I mean, I think this was a Maldini profile. It's not even technically the new management's profile, but Milan was on top of this player. They knew he was available as a free agent. They wanted to go for him. They've been negotiating with him for weeks. On top of that, he is a French international and got an offer from PSG, which he turned down. He was going to get more money at PSG, but he probably wouldn't have had as much playtime. Apparently, Stefano Pioli had a conversation with him, said he will be my starter. So that you would assume would be another reason for the player to join Milan. On top of that, Milan has four French players on their squad. He's played with Mike Mania for the international team. He went to the World Cup with Theo Hernandez and Olivier Giroud. So you would think that would be a reasonable pull for a player who's been a childhood fan of the club, rejects PSG, has a bunch of French teammates on the Milan team, but he says no. And at the core of it, his reason for saying no is the sporting project. The crazy thing is, leading up into the summer window, all of us were sitting there thinking Milan is probably the most stable club. Our books are balanced, other clubs are struggling to pay off their debts. We have a solid management, we have our players signed to long-term extensions, there's something happening here. And Jerry Cardinal and the upper management group have come in and somehow just managed to completely dismantle that in a matter of three weeks. And here are probably some of the reasons he chose to reject AC Milan, go with Inter Milan, and we have to start off with a sporting project. Under the leadership of Paolo Maldini, with all the players renewed, there was a sense of optimism about where Milan was headed. One saw them win the Serie A title, make it into the semifinal of the Champions League. Everything looked like it was trending in the right direction. Suddenly, in a matter of three weeks, Maldini gets fired, Sandro Tonali is moved. Players outside who are being recruited by Milan are now confused. For some period of time, they're having conversations with the greatest, arguably the greatest player of all time in Paolo Maldini, and suddenly they're having to take phone calls from Moncada and Ferlani, names that they've never heard in the game. They're watching Maldini get fired ruthlessly. They're watching the club sell Tonali. They don't really know where Milan is headed. The shocking part is that Inter's own system is pretty much a mess. The club has, I think the ownership group has like three or four lawsuits in multiple different countries. They're struggling to pay off their debts. They themselves are possibly gonna 
sell their goalkeeper to Manchester United. But seeing all of that, Thurm still believed Inter's project makes more sense for him. Then you bring in the equation of his father. His father's probably looking at the same thing. At the risk of repeating the things, his dad's gonna look at the same things. Maldini's firing, Tonali's sale. Hey, you know what? I don't know what Milan's doing. We don't really get where they're headed. You might as well join the Nerazzurri, and which brings me to my third reason. Look at what they did in the Champions League final. They went neck to neck with Manchester City. Whatever might be happening in their board with their budgets, clearly they're still performing well on the field. And this is the team that beat your AC Milan four times last season. So the choice might actually be clear. Inter Milan's probably the better team to join right now. And the final reason, a reason that some people believe might be the main reason, is the salary. Milan was paying him less. A few years ago, we saw Hakan Chalanoglu get an offer from Milan. He rejected that. He went to Inter for only, I think, 500,000 or 1 million euro more. And today, it was pretty much the same case. Milan offered him 5 million with 1 million in bonuses, and Inter gave him a flat out 6 million salary. Now, did that 1 million completely change his mind suddenly? Because if it was the money, he should have gone to PSG. But clearly, it wasn't just the cash. It was all the reasons we've listed. It. And this is the part that has to be mentioned. Marcus Thurm in himself, I don't think, my opinion, I don't think that's the greatest loss for Milan. I think Milan can find another striker. It wasn't the Champions League semifinal loss that bothered Milanisti. It was the fact that they lost to Inter. And the fact that Marcus Thurm had been negotiating with Milan for about a month now, and in a 24 hour period, just in a few hours, chooses Inter, that's the part that has to embarrass the ownership, the management, Milan's players and absolutely the fan base as well. So from the looks of it, Marcus Thuram is headed to Inter Milan. The, the tough part for Milan now is this. Thuram was one of the rare free agents available for this position. Now Milan's gonna have to go and buy somebody. Considering the fact that you already let go of Tonali and you already have to reinvest those funds into finding a central midfielder, going out and purchasing a striker is an even harder job to do. Strikers are some of the most expensive assets that a team can buy. So more likely than not, it probably is going to be a loan move for Milan. And that cannot be the direction that Cardinal and Scaroni and Forlani apparently wanted to take Milan. Failing in signing a free agent and getting rejected loanies to the club. Now talking about some of the profiles that Milan is being linked with, well, I guess on top you have Gianluca Scamacca. The former Sassuolo man made a move to West Ham last season. Obviously, as a lot of people could have predicted, didn't really go exactly as planned. At this point in time, it looks like he might be available on loan. His salary, I think, is closer to 5 million, so it would be pretty much like getting Marcus Thurm in. Does he have the better quality or more quality than Thurm? He possibly does. I mean, he does have Serie A experience, so I don't think it would be a very bad move to bring Skamaka in. It just goes against everything that the club is claiming that their direction is supposed to be. And at this point, more than ever, with all the changes being made, fans have to believe in the project more than individual players. So if Thurm came, I'd be happy. If Skamaka comes, I'd probably be equally happy. And to me, at this point in time, I guess I would say it's possible. It's either a rumor or it's possible. I won't call this unlikely because Milan does need a striker at the end of the day. The other profile we're reportedly interested in is Alvaro Morata. I don't even want to address this. I mean, this player has been in Serie A, jumped out, jumped back in. It's just, it's a mess. I mean, his season with Atletico Madrid, I think last year wasn't too bad. He had over 10 goals. He does have a decent bit of Serie A experience, but again, this is not a young player. This is not part of the project that we were being told. The guy is 30. What's the management doing? So for me, at this point in time, Alvaro Morata to Milan, I think it's just a rumor. And the final Final profile we'll talk about quickly is Arda Guler. It does look like Milan is really ramping up their interest in this player. A lot of reports are suggesting that Milan have officially asked for permission with Fenerbahce to have discussions with the player's entourage. In the previous video, I had called this a rumor, but seeing their latest reports and seeing the fact that he kind of does fit Milan's profile. He has a 17 and a half million euro release clause. He's 18 years old. The player clearly has good talent. I watched him play a couple of games. Passing's great. Shooting is clearly great. Scored a phenomenal goals against, I think, Wales a few days back. So again, the player has good quality. And at this point in time, I'm gonna upgrade this. I don't think this is a rumor anymore. I think this is very much real. Milan is trying to go for this profile, but we need a striker. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave you guys in this video with a little bit of a positive spin on this whole situation. So I'll say two things. Two things have happened with Marcus Thurman potentially going to enter. One is we've probably lost out on a player that I don't really think was that great. This has nothing to do with him going to enter. This is something I felt well before I had it in my notes that is he even good enough to be getting paid 6 million from Milan, becoming the highest paid player in the first season more than Rafael Leao. So the first positive thing is we probably lost out on a player that maybe is fine to lose out on. But the second positive that I'm gonna spin on this is the fact that Jerry Cardinal might get a wake up call now. He might actually have to see that this is how football works. Who 
who you have up top, who's negotiating your deals absolutely matters. You had an asset worth millions in Paolo Maldini. You let him go. I understand why he was let go. Clearly Maldini was never gonna align with his vision. He probably would have quit by now if he would have seen Sandro Tonali being forced out. But the club has to wake up and recognize either the owner gets even more involved or he hires the right people to be able to do these negotiations. So we lost out on a player that was probably not the best anyways. And this might just be a wake up call for Jerry Cardinal. And I'd much rather they learn their lesson before June is even over than learning it a year into the season itself. And if you guys like this kind of content, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you can watch these videos as soon as I upload them. And taking the fifth Derby loss against Inter this season, it's heartbreaking, but we gotta do it. Forza Milan, grazie mille e ciao tutti.